Hello everyone, uh, welcome again to another series of video from Electronics Eternity. Uh, it's been a while since I posted uh, this video, probably some of you may notice that. Uh, it's because I've been busy with work and uh, I took a bit of time uh, trying to learn and explore this uh, model which we will discuss today in detail. So today we will be discussing about uh, an LCD display it's uh, basically a 2.4 inch display uh, 240 times 320 resolution so it uses uh, ILI 9341 uh, as its processor so uh, as some of you may noticed uh, in YouTube or in even in Google and websites we already have so many resources uh, related to LCD display uh, however, I have done something differently and I think this will be uh, a, a good learning for all of you guys. What I have done so differently with this uh, tutorial is I'm not using any libraries in my uh, LCD display control. So I'm basically uh, you know, coding everything from scratch and uh, th there are some specific reasons why I'm doing this. right? So, uh, first of all, when you are not using any library, you get to save a bit of space in your microcontroller, right? Uh, as, as you know, your microcontroller would have like limited space and, and therefore not using any readily available libraries will help you to save some space because uh, you, you get to only uh, insert or, or include the functions that you use uh, as a part of your LCD display instead of using the uh, entire library itself which which can be uh, at times more than what you actually need okay and uh, apart from that uh, another one reason why I choose not to uh, you, you know make use of ready readily existing libraries is that uh, uh, as an inventor I wasn't actually uh, you know as, as a hobbyist right I wasn't actually uh, how, do, how do I put this? I wasn't really satisfied with using an already finished product because uh, uh, at the core level, I don't understand what is exactly happening, right? And and also to to some extent, uh, flexibility is uh, becomes a problem, right? So I wanted to understand what what is happening at core level, uh, which was actually fulfilling when I actually studied the entire data sheet and I I finally got to know how. LCD interprets a certain command and, and behaves in a certain way, right? So, uh, as an inventor, it gives me that satisfaction to study uh, everything from scratch and then to finally be able to code and produce a graphical uh, display in that LCD as you desire without using any, any existing libraries, right? So, uh, in, in short, that, that's why I chose not to, you know, make use of existing library. Uh, however, I think it's important that uh, everyone understand that uh, uh, everything uh, I've studied and, and understood could be limited or, or it could be partially correct or, uh, you know, it, it's uh, it, even in some aspect, it could be incorrect, right? However, uh, how do I, you know, deduce or, or determine if something is working is, of course, by seeing the outputs that is displayed in the LCD display. Right, so if, if the output is is uh, how do I say that is is displayed properly according to what I want, then I, I would say that you know my my understanding and how I come to derive a, a certain understanding is actually correct, right? So, however, there is a risk that I, I might be partially misunderstanding something, and and therefore I would like to make that clear. Hopefully, someone you know when when they are watching this video, if they have a better idea or better understanding, they could share in the comment. And it will be two two way learning for all of us, right? So, so that's what I would like to make clear of. Okay, having all that said, uh, now let's jump to the coding and uh, you know let's discuss from there and then. Okay, so uh, as as you can see at the top left corner, I have defined some colors. Uh, uh, as you can see these are the basic colors common colors that we would normally see okay so uh, define black and right next to it we have the respective uh, hex code 
so for now uh, just try to understand that these colors are being represented by the uh, hex code which lies just next to it for example blue is represented by 0x001f and red is represented by 0f800 okay so uh, at this point uh, just just understand that you know these colors are represented by you know this hex code how do we come to this as x code how do we derive this uh, i will discuss this in another tutorial uh, the reason why i'm doing this is because uh, basically i have created my own function which is a lot more flexible than just this uh, you know hex color codes so and and also by explaining that uh, you will actually gain an idea about how do we come to this hex code and and the color combinations okay so for now just understand that this is how it works and and when when the next tutorial comes we'll learn in detail about these colors okay so next is uh, well, we're seeing a, a bunch of pins here like analog pins and and we are defining them accordingly okay uh, lcd rd is basically lcd read so it serves as read signal from mcu and reads data at the rising edge so it's it's written in page 11 data sheet so just in case if you need to refer you can always go to the data sheet and then refer okay so uh next is lcd read write so it serves as a write signal lcd rs this is a command or data pin d slash cx uh, fine uh, next is we have chip select pin it's an active low pin and finally we have reset okay uh if, if you could see or if you have come across several examples about lcd display they would always define these pins right there's a reason why they are doing this it's it's mainly because these pins are really important uh, when it comes to uh, determining how your lcd behaves and and you know interpret commands okay so just just under uh, you know just be sure about uh, these commands sorry this pin and and the respective uh, analog pins okay so uh, just just to speak briefly about this uh, let me tell you what does each of these pins are about okay so this is uh, uh, the information that we can find in the data sheet so uh, rc resx is basically a reset pin and and the signal is active low that means it's activated when it's low right uh, next is CSX which is a chip select pin again this is low enable it's an active low pin as well all right uh, next is data or command pin so this pin is used to select data or command so when when it's one data is being selected when it's zero command is being selected okay so uh, uh, this pin I think it works at okay no there's, there's no rising edge related to this pin okay so uh data pin data equals one it means uh, data is being selected if it's zero that means command is being selected uh rdx is basically serves as a read signal uh at a rise at the rising edge so uh just just note the word rising edge we will discuss this in detail a bit later uh, rx uh, wrx is a write pin so it serves as a write signal and writes data at the rising edge right so this rising edge is basically how your processor in the lcd will differentiate uh, command and data right so uh, for probably for some of you who are really new to this you might be wondering you know what, what are all these pins are about but uh uh, for, for now just understand that these pins are really important in uh, determining your the way that your LCD behaves or how you wish to communicate and instruct your LCD right so understand that because we will be manipulating uh, these pins to be set to high and low to, to, to send some instructions to your LCDs right so uh, just keep that in mind for now okay so as i have already explained about uh, you know this this uh this pins uh I, before i go to the, before i go to the next part of of the code I, I think it's important for me to 
explain the right cycle sequence okay so uh, I want to explain a bit on this theory so that when we go to the codes uh, we can basically relate why we are doing certain things as a part of our program right as a part of our code okay so this can be found in your data sheet as well so this can be found in your data sheet as well uh, if i'm not wrong let me find the page numbers All right so oh boy it's going taking too long if i'm not wrong it should be somewhere at page You know what? I'm uh, just to make things easy. Right cycle sequence. Right, so where's the right cycle sequence? Okay, so this is the right cycle sequence. You can find this in the data sheet, right? And and if if you are interested, you can do some reading over here. Okay, just to understand what this is about. You know, to gain more knowledge on this. Okay, so uh however i am still going to explain this okay so uh as, as we discussed the pins before we have chip select pin over here we have reset data or command we have write and we also have uh, read pins we have the data pins right so uh in in my example over here i am using this 2.4 tft lcd display right so since it is a shield it, it is being stacked on top of my arduino uno and accordingly the pins are connected right so lcd reset is connected to analog 4 lcd chip select is connect to analog 3 so on and so forth right so and and on the right hand side we can see the data pins right data pins starts with d0 and d1 and then d2 to d7 right so these are the respective pins and and over here we have the sd card pins over here we have the ground and, and power pins right so uh, it's it's important for you to know which pins are connected to uh, which analog pins in your Arduino Uno. So if if you don't have a shield or if you have a different shield, or, or even if you are not using a shield, you are manually connecting those, then you need to be sure about these combinations, right? Which is why at the beginning, uh, we. Which is why at the beginning, uh, we we define these pins, right? So if if your LCD display has different combinations then be sure to adjust and make the changes over here okay so back to the right cycle sequence so we have write pin read pin and we have the data pins right so when when right cycle sequence happens right just note that this chip select pin needs to be low right and and reset is high uh, reset and chip select pin are active low uh, pin so since we are not resetting we are setting it to high at all times however to activate chip select pin we need to c create uh, how do i say a falling edge uh, an active low signal and therefore over here it becomes low right so next is data or command pin right so uh, if, if you could remember uh, data or command pin right when data is one data is selected when data command pin is zero command is selected so when when this goes low it becomes zero and and therefore uh, it is sending command address okay when it's low it is sending command address when it's high it's sending data address however another important thing for you to note is the changes in the right pin uh, you can see uh, when right pin uh, and when a rising edge in the right pin is triggered and the data pin is low that means it's sending command address however if we are creating a rising edge and and the data and command pin is set to high uh, your lcd processor would interpret that as a command data is being sent right so note the differences over here in order to send command address you need to set you need to create a rising edge over here you need to set your data or command pin to low however when you're sending data uh, you need to create a rising edge in the right pin however this thing needs to be high right so at, at this point uh, to, to some of you I, I think it may be a little confusing 
having so much of combinations of high and low across five to so many pins right so uh, just uh, try to bear with me uh, just carry this understanding uh, in your memory and as we code you will understand why and how we are doing this okay so let's go back to our codes again okay now let's look at the first void function that i have in my program okay uh, so this void is uh, this void is basically meant for di writing uh, into your data pins all right so uh, as, as you can see in the uh, you know read cycle instructions we have our data pins uh from 0 to 17 and, and also uh, in, in my display i have it connected from uh you know this pins d0 d1 to d7 so in, in total i have like eight pins okay so this void what it will do is it will, it will write to those data pins okay so uh for when when you are writing to to data pins as as per the uh, re, uh write cycle uh, sequence you will need to create a rising edge right so so over here we can see this rising edge okay so this rising edge is what we create over here we write it to low and then we simply set it to high okay so this is the uh this is how we create the rising edge okay so uh and and we are we'll, we are going to pass some values to it and and this is how we will be passing that values to it okay so uh we are using port command so arduino port d is pin 0 to 7 port b is pin 8 to 13 and port c is the end lock pins right so in in port d pin 0 and 1 is not used in the shield right let's let me just show the shield right uh pin 0 and 1 is is over here in in arduino uno and, and therefore we are not using that uh, it's not being labeled means it's, it's not being used okay so uh and in port b which is pin 8 to 13 10 11 12 13 is not used so let's go to port port b so uh, 10 11 12 13 is, is not being used okay so which is why our write functions works like this okay there is and and or combinations over here and and this is how we write uh, information to those data pins okay so uh, over here I have some some comments it's basically speak about respective pins from my LCD pins to the uno pins right so if, if you find any difference then uh, you, you know you should uh, you should change this ac accordingly as well okay so most of the time uh, this is how it works okay so this is how we write information to the data pins and and next is we have lcd command write and also we have data write uh, if you can remember just now I, I spoke about this data or command pinned over here so let me just now extract this to the left okay so we have data and command pin over here so when when data is low command is being sent and when data is high data information is being sent so command address command data uh, command address is basically an, an instruction right for example uh, let's just say draw a pixel right that's a that's a command address that's a command instruction command data is basically say uh, yes, we draw we are drawing a pixel, but what color right so uh, in LCD uh, Display it, it always uh, most of the time. It's not always it, most of the time it works in pair For example, if you send some command to say draw a pixel or set an address and and subsequently we will be followed by data uh, information which uh, supports the command address that we sent before right so which is why we are like we are having these two different voids one is to write command and another one is to write data so the only differences that we can obviously see here is that lcd rs is low so it's low when we are sending command 
and it's high we are sending data so high over here low over here and and low is used for common and high is used for data and and what happens next is we write we use the lcd write common which we discussed just before but when you put the command over here it will just pass on the value to this void and accordingly whatever value in hex or in binary that we are transferring will be written to all these pins right which is pin uh, 8 9 2 to 7 so which then will will uh, be be transferred to lcd pins which are stacked on top of it so based on this high and low zero and one across these pins uh, we will be telling our processor what information we are sending okay so uh, at, at this point it might be a little confusing so uh, i suggest you you know revisit this video once or twice if you need to right so for now just uh, i hope you can bear with me as i give an example on how we write a command and how we write a data i, I hope you will understand better okay okay now let's look at a void called lcd initialization so as, as a short form i've put uh, lcd i and it okay <clears throat> so uh, this is just some comments over here for my understanding white does not return any value white only execute instruction within it right so therefore it's white white similar to white setup and white loop uh, this function will have lcd initialization measures only the necessary commands are covered even though there are so many more in the data sheet okay so uh, i will explain what do i mean by there are so many commands more in the data sheet okay for now let's look at the first part of this lcd initialization uh <clears throat> we okay so there's a comment here which states that lcd signal is active low right so basically what i'm doing here is just putting it to high low and then high again right so just to simulate that scenario which is uh the reset pin is active low right so which is why actual reset is done here okay this is very simple high low high so just to reset it once and then next is the below is just preparation for write cycle sequence uh chip select pin is high so it is a active low signal right and at the end of uh, end of the uh, you know this paragraph if i could say that uh, we're basically setting it to low again so chip select pin is low right and write pin is high read pin is high okay so just to look at the write cycle sequence like wr pin is high rdx is high when needed will create a rising edge over here which we have discussed before okay so uh, just, just like what is mentioned over here the entire setup over here is just to you know as a preparation for write cycle sequence okay moving on to the next part okay so lcd command write 0 xc5 Base, based on my you know testing uh, i think uh, this particular command uh, function like color contrast okay so let's quickly go to the data sheet and uh, just to show you where i found this command c5h right okay so so this is c5h command over here and as you can see <coughs> so the the first part is of course sending the command and and secondly we will be setting the vmh uh, which is uh, i think vm high and the next is vm low okay so probably the highest upper boundary and the lowest of lower boundary right so uh, what i have set over here is i've set this to 48 right so i'm, I'm guessing 48 stands for uh, five volt something right so because if if you were to convert 48 to some some binaries you would you would probably get some some values over here 
you know just for the sake of testing right so let's just try that out uh, let's see what does 48 looks like in binary <coughs> So one zero zero one zero zero. Okay, so I'm I'm guessing there should be a zero over here. Okay, so uh, so I have like three point six volt. Okay, and uh, <coughs> right. 0 0.36 volt and what is the low value right let's see oh my bad I'm, I'm looking at the whole wrong place so it's 54 instead of 48 my bad so it, it's actually this this part of here excuse me for the confusion okay so it's 54 so let's see what 50 binary so let me just change this to 54 and let's see how it turns out so 54 is 1010 zero, zero. so again I'm guessing there should be a zero over here so 1010 zero, one zero, 100 zero. <coughs> One zero one zero. Okay, so one two three. So again, it's it's all seven digits over here. So I think it's gonna start with one one zero one zero. Let's find the value. Okay, so this is the value, one zero, one zero, one hundred. Okay, so I'm setting it to four point eight volts, right? And and uh, Vcom L, I'm setting it to the lowest value possible, right? So uh, let's expand this for a bit. So lowest value possible is basically it's all zero, right? So it's negative two point five. Okay. So we we can try changing the values of this number and and see how it behaves, right? Okay. So let me just upload this command and show you how it looks like on the LCD display. Okay, the screen may be a little bit blur because you know my my camera is very close to the LCD display, but but what you can see over here is we have a white line and then red and then blue. Okay, let's try changing, you know, we come low and and see what it gives us. For an example, let's just say if I'm setting it to 54 as well, right? So one zero just take some some random values okay uh, for example this value and uh, let's write this particular value Okay, so it's uploaded. See, there's not much change to the color. Uh, let's try changing the value at top. I just say I'm gonna drop this to something even lower, like three volts or something.
okay while well, replaced now let's upload the see what's the difference uploading done uploading still not much difference okay what happens if I just you know go to the highest extreme possible I just change this value to zero zero instead of waiting okay if you could see the, the the color is a lot less clearer now because uh, I'm, I'm not sure because the contrasts are very different now okay because it's just so damn bright and and, and the colors are not popping up okay I'm, I'm not sure if you could see it um, in in my screen because mine is a bit blur so but I hope you get the idea, right? So to some extent, it, it functions like color contrast. So you can always, you know, change these values and, and see what best fits your LCD display, right? It's, it's all about experimenting and, and playing with these values. Okay. Okay. I, I hope that explains sufficiently about this part. Let's move on to the next one then okay so the next one is 36 okay let's look for 36 in the data sheet so 36 hitch okay so we found 36 36 basically speaks about this command defines read write scanning direction of frame memory okay uh, this command makes no change on the other driver status so I don't quite actually under uh, you know understand the explanation over here so I'm not sure what they mean by refresh but what I understand clearly about this is based on my experimentation and and you know by by changing this value by trial and error what I understand is uh, this command can in influence the starting point of your X and Y coordinates. That means your row and columns. And also you can change your color codes to RGB to BGR. Okay. So let's see what what it means. Okay. So over here I have 48. So let's find what 48 stands for in binary. Okay so uploading 48 and we have 48 of binaries 100 1000 so you have 101 over here 100 100 1000 so 10 100 okay so basically i'm setting this to one and i'm setting this to one okay uh okay let's Okay, look at the screen for now and I'm gonna upload the same code just so that we we can revert back to the original state where we could see these three lines okay let now let's see what happens when I change this right so I'm basically I'm setting one zero 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 and why there are so many zeros over here probably I'm gonna just leave it okay we have 1000 so basically zero 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 one i'm setting my bgr to one okay so just to show you the difference in color orientations right rgb and, and bgr so let's upload that and see how the color changes oh there's not much difference over there so what if if i set this to zero Still not much difference, right? I doubt if I'm touching the same. Uh, it's four from the left. One, two, three, four. Let's see. Okay, we have, and now. Something is wrong over here so i have my blue oh okay 
if I set this I have red blue white and if I set that to one what happens is I have blue red and white just to show the difference again blue red white turns to red blue white so you see how the color changes when when you you know when you swap between RGB to BGR so that that is basically the, the difference over there right when you change from BGR to RGB so when you are setting colors just just be mindful to check this part and use the uh, the correct color setting based on what do you want okay based on your desire right so just just something for you to take note because if you got this wrong then you know you'll be scratching over your head to, to identify what what is going wrong you could be getting blue for green red for white or just anything right so just check this setting before you do anything and and see your, how your color turns out okay so again uh if you can remember i spoke about a, i spoke about this command being able to control your starting coordinates of x and y as well so let's try put one over here and see how it changes you see my my line just changed from horizontal lines to vertical lines okay so again this is another one point for you to check because if you are drawing a pixel or a line or, or a circle or, or even if you're drawing uh, a, a rectangle and and you're just not getting what you want it's just all over the place probably this is one of the command that you should check and and based on your lcd display whether you want it to start from the left or from the right you, you should change this values accordingly right so uh, again it's subject to a lot of experimentation so when, when you might be holding a different uh, LCD display from what I have so you have to experiment this part and, and make sure that you have the right settings before you can go forward with your you know complete set of graphical display development okay so uh, I guess that is all for this particular command let's go on to 3a okay so moving on to 3a hitch so we have 3a hitch over here so 3a hitch is this command sets the pixel format for rgb image data used by the interface okay uh, so if, if you want to read more go ahead and, and read more but uh, it to me it doesn't matter much because i've done my study so mainly what this uh, you know command is used for is to set uh, your your pixel to 16 bits color format or 18 bits color format okay so uh, in my case I'm using 16 so 0 uh, 1 0 1 and then 0 again and then 1 0 1 again so which then it gives me the value of 55 okay 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 just to prove that to you uh, I'm gonna go here and 0 1 0 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 okay so let's upload that so we have that value as 55 okay so which is why I have 55 over here because I'm using 16 bits color orientation. I don't need 18 bits. 16 bits is already rich enough for me. It's just so many colors in abundance for you to use, right? So I'm, I'm happy with 16 and therefore I'm setting it 16. Okay. Next is uh, command zero hash x11. So let's see what that is next next sleep out what does sleep out means so this command turns off sleep mode so as, as you are initializing your lcd display you, you're just turning off the sleep mode okay so it's necessary to wait five milliseconds it, it is actually written here it will be necessary to wait five milliseconds uh, me just being generous i'm just putting it 10 over here 
uh, which is something very unnoticeable you wouldn't even notice that 10 milliseconds passing by okay so this is just to snap out of that sleep mode to, to make your LCD just to snap out of that mode okay uh, nothing much on this this command does not need any parameter like I said uh, some commands would need data to support commands however some can work alone like this one it does not need data parameters because it's a simple sleep out command right okay so that explains uh, sufficiently about that next is 29 let's see what 29 is so this is 29 so this command is used to recover from display off mode output from the frame memory is enabled uh, this make no change to the content of frame memory it does not change okay again uh, this is just some some setting to turn on the display right uh, nothing much to be spoken about uh, about this command so it's very simple this is just to turn on the display that's all next is 2c let's see 2c so 2c is quite a famous one it will be using 2c a lot so uh, as, as we progress through the tutorial you will be seeing a lot of 2c okay so 2c what 2c does is this command basically transfers data from mcu microcontroller unit to your frame memory okay so uh, uh, I think when you have certain instruction being set and it's ready you just want to pass it from MCU to frame memory that's it so this kind of works like uh, 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 how do I say this it's uh, based on my understanding uh, this is a, a compulsory command so every time you initialize something you, you, you set something in place at the end of it you you need to run this command the same applies for drawing pixel or setting addresses that we will be looking into so setting any areas or region in the lcd display that we will be working on so a lot of those such commands at the end of it you will see t uh, 2c so basically when when you have a list of setups you just want to pass that from mcu to the frame memory right at least that's what i understood about this uh if if you have better understanding feel free to you know to, to post that in the comment but based on what i've done uh, my study on this is how it, it works and this is what it means okay so with that being said uh, i think we have uh we have finished our lcd initialization okay so uh my initialization void covers what i feel necessary even though there are like a ton more of, of commands okay uh, for example to find uh how many instructions you have i think you can go to page 89 from the data set so uh, uh if i'm not wrong yeah this is the very first command which is it's an empty command i don't know what it does but just to give you a picture, this is page 89. So there are just so many commands. You can just read through until page 200, if I'm not wrong. Oh, apologies. Page 200. So even till page 200, you still have such commands, right? So, you know, if, if, you're, if you're free or if you feel that this is a necessary step, you know, just go through all of these pages and... Uh, you no, know, try to read and understand what each of this command does and probably you'll find something good or something that you're looking for or something that simplifies your work you know in, in a how to say in a drastic manner okay so it's it's good to study this command I, I recommend you to do so however if you feel like it's you know it's just too much information to process you can just stick with the commands that i have in my void lcd initialization it works perfectly fine uh, nothing to worry about the rest of the commands okay okay now let's look at void address so basically uh we, we have a void here which helps us to set address uh in a simpler way so that uh, you know you don't have to call each of these lines every time you want to set an address so so for, for a start let's look at 
what are the constituents of writing an address so column address set so let me just expand this for a bit okay so this command is used to define area of the frame memory where MCU can access this command may changes uh, no changes to other driver status okay uh, so the, the first uh, commands are, are send when, when we send to a h and then we we send the first uh, parameter which is bit number 16 to bit number 8 and, and finally bit number 7 to bit number 0 so in, in total it's a 16 bits of uh, information and uh, usually this this command is followed by the column address is followed by the uh, let me go a bit lower is followed by the page address so column address and page address kind of functions like x and y coordinates okay so page address basically tells in which row that we are accessing so uh, again it's the same format you send the first hex command and, and then you followed by the data part which uh, contains 16 bits of information uh, similarly, that's what we have drafted in the void over here. Uh, you, you can see that uh, void address, we have 16-bit uh, uh, int type of uh, information. So y1, y2, x1, x2. So what we do when we first get the information is y1 is shifted 8 bits to the right because we want to make it uh, as 16 bits of information so first we will send that information to to the lcd uh to to support this 2a command and next is you send y1 right so the the same happens when we are sending y2 we shift it eight bits to the right and then you send y2 right so this is basically column address done and and the same we have for page address we send the 2b first and then we send the x coordinates eight bits shifted to the right and then we send x1 so the same for x2 8 bits shifted to the right and then we send x2 so finally once all this is done we we write the information to memory right so like i said 2c will come come a lot in our functions and at the end of all this setting we just want to write whatever we have set up into the frame memory that's it okay so that's that's about for white address having this white kind of makes uh, address setting for our programs easy okay okay next we are going to look at void draw pixel okay so this void basically helps us to simply draw a pixel to a color that we want right so drawing a pixel is basically the foundation of everything for example even if you want to draw a line draw a rectangle a circle or, or just about whatever you need to first draw a pixel to construct in hold the shape that you want right so uh, which is why I'm, I'm starting with drawing pixel so so that it would serve as a in a good understanding for all of us okay so it within this function the first line is to write the chip select active to low and next is to set address so whatever point where we want to draw the pixel it would basically set the address to that point y and x and for y2 and x2 we'll just add one right just to uh, just to inform that the MCU that this is the region that we are looking at so once done we, we can send the 2c value so actually 2c is not needed it has already been defined here so let's comment this out and see if it works okay and uh, after that we are writing colors so again uh, color is a 16-bit information as well so once we have set the color we will be sending that in you know of 8-bit shifted to the right and then we'll send the color so this is a very simple command just to draw a pixel all right so next let's move on to white setup so in, in white setup, as you can see, we are using DDR pin mode, right? So uh, DDR is a pin mode command. There's a typo over here. So it's a pin mode command where pin 0 sets to input, pin 1 sets to output. 
okay so uh, in this port D we are setting pin 2 to 7 as output right pin 2 to 7 as output pin 0 and 1 remains untouched and uh, in port B over here DDRB we are setting pin 8 and 9 as output 8 and 9 as output and and the remaining is set to input okay so in port C which contains all the analog pins we are setting analog pin 0 to analog pin 5 as output right so this DDR command kind of helps us to set pin modes to a lot of pin at once easily if, without having to write you know a lot of multi, uh, a lot of lines of dig, uh, set pin mode or something right so we, we can just use this to set multiple pins at once okay so it kind of makes the job easy which is why I'm using DDR over here and uh, let's see what is there for port C okay uh, again this is not needed because we have actually covered this in our LCD initialization program and therefore I'm commenting that out okay so LCD initialization serial begin uh, just to help you understand about this port uh, you, you can look into these diagrams uh, I think it's available in the Arduino website these are port B these are port D and these are port C so in port B we are only using pin 8 and 9 in port D we are using pin 2 to 7 so in, in port C we're using analog pin 0 to analog pin 4 okay which uh, which explains this whole lines of command that we have over here okay next is we're just init, uh, initializing serial begin I use serial begin just for my testing uh, even though it's, it's not actually needed right for, for this uh, just in case if you want to add any lines to, to your programming it would serve as a good debug tool okay uh that is all for our white setup now let's go to white loop so what white loop is basically doing it's uh drawing a line from you know uh, i50 to to right so it's this is uh y1 x1 coordinates is it y1 or x1 no these are x1 coordinates and these are y coordinates so um, I'm just drawing multiple lines in this y coordinates from x equal to 50 until x equal to 250 okay so uh, this is the command that has already been uploaded to our to our uh, LCD display which is why you can see uh, blue red white line is showing up over here so just to you know change the values a bit and, and to show you that this command is actually working I'm going to change all the lines to white and let's see how it turns out okay so I'm uploading that let's see how it goes so all lines are all white lines are appearing uh, just to maybe we can you know increase the length of the lines so I'm going to change 250 to 300 uh, let's see if the line increases in length okay so uh, with with this command you can use and, and draw pixels wherever you want okay so uh, so I, I think we have come to the end of our uh, our tutorial so I, I hope you have uh, learned a lot in in how to use an LCD display without having a library uh, I also hope that you manage to see the difference and benefit in using LCD display without a library uh, not to say library is entirely not usable or it does not bring any advantage uh, however I just wanted to say that you know without using library we can you can make your code much more compact and also it gives you a, a deeper form of understanding on, on how your LCD display interprets this command how its processor reads differences in pin and behave accordingly okay uh, I hope you had a good time and uh, please uh, like and subscribe uh, I would really love to hear from you guys All right thank you until then take care bye